We're down here on Fort Myers Beach. This unit here, it's the 16 unit. We videotaped it uh, about two months ago. Uh, the video's done very well. So this is our, uh, these are our new signs. Um, we're putting them up on the jobs that we're working on. And what I want to do right now is I'm going to walk you through and show you what we do when we take things apart. That's a 323 excavator. We have two of them. That's what we use to take apart most things. And this particular project, like I said before, 16 condos that were uh, put together and never really sold off as condos. They were technically condos, but like I said, were never used that way. So this has been used as an inn. We had a problem with this one. The common areas were in the former owner's name and we were trying to get a demo permit and uh, Fort Myers Beach is kind of on their butts about this particular property. It ended up on the list of 10 properties that Fort Myers Beach wanted taken care of first. So Fort Myers Beach, we're getting real close to the two year anniversary and there's a lot of properties that are just sitting and they look really bad. And you know, you're in a really high end fancy area. The properties that are across the street are on the Gulf of Mexico. So literally the golf is like one football field behind that excavator. What he's tearing up right now, there were two units upstairs and there was one unit in the back of this building and in the front part of this building, they used it as their office. Uh, this place, they rented bicycles and it was a pretty popular place on the southern end of the beach. A lot of people have spent family vacations here there's Colton shaking apart and getting the steel and the uh, radiator apart out of an HVAC system. And that just makes it easier for Bernard back at the shop. So here what he's doing is he's separating, to the best of his ability, he's separating the concrete and the C and D, the construction debris. The weight is a big difference. So a concrete dumpster is just going to cost a couple hundred dollars to dump it. C and D is done by weight. It doesn't matter what a concrete dumpster weighs, they're going to take it as a concrete dumpster. And it may be $100, it may be $200, it depends on where we are dumping. Um, and to keep it clean is what, what they want is to have the bare minimum amount of construction debris or any other foreign object in the concrete. The reason is, is the concrete, uh, they're going to mulch it up and recycle it and it'll be in some new building by next week. Well, possibly next week, but they recycle it pretty quickly. They'll take it with the rebar in it. They don't ideally want the rebar. It's something that they have to deal with. So what you see there is Colton is separating this as he's tearing it down and he's getting the concrete separated the best he can. Uh, anything we take to the C&D dump that's concrete, it weighs a lot and it really affects the uh, weight and what you're able to make in your profit on your uh, demo. You see Hudson here, he's having a blast. He loves this drone. He has uh, gotten very good at it. Do you see what he was shaking there? That thing he was just shaking there was a huge piece of copper. They had like two inch copper lines running through this building. Right there, he's dumping C and D, um, which is typically pretty much everything that you would get in a, in a house without the furniture and the concrete.
that is a 65 yard dump and what he's doing right there is he's uh, knocking the little pieces back into it so that they can put the tarp on it. We've had this job for a while and we had a problem getting that um, that problem solved. So the former owner that owned it before these guys owned it, the common areas were still in their name. So even though this wasn't a condominium association, it still had the common areas in their name. So we had to track down that person and we had to get a quick claim deed from them. Basically had to get them to sign something that said that they don't have any ownership interest in this property. So we had to get that before they would allow us to tear it down. Now the city does that because they want to protect their butts. They don't want to give authorization to tear something down and then find out that the person they gave the authorization to doesn't even own it. These pieces of concrete here, if you notice when he's getting a hold of them, he's almost able to pick up the full sheets at a time, which is really cool because what happens is now he'll be able to stack them nice and tight in one of the dumpsters. So these guys gotta be careful here. You know, if you go on an excavator and you go in the one direction for too many times, you can unscrew the excavator. When we first started talking to these guys about this job, they're having an issue with their insurance company. So what they did is the insurance company, because they're in dispute, they tell them they don't want them to tear the building down. Um, so it took them a while to get authorization and they basically had to tell them, look, the city is making us tear this down. You have to tear it down. So watch how he lays this in here. See how he lays it in there? It's kind of cool. It's kind of like playing uh, Legos or something. So he's taking these full cool slabs and he's laying them in there. And you know what? We get more stuff in one load. It gives us less trips to the dump. So we got two of them roll off truck and we got about, uh, I think 15 dumpsters. No, we don't rent dumpsters out. All we do is we use them to do our own work. This is the Estero Bay back there at the end of the canal. This building was built on a grade beam. And what a grade beam is, pretty much it's a structure that's underneath the ground that holds the building up. So this is kind of like having a foundation, like a, not a foundation like a basement, but kind of like more or less their footers. And they go down into the ground a little bit uh, to get to some solid dirt. So you see a Sepio over there and what he's doing is while he's waiting uh, to do things that the guys may need him to do, which can be dust control or it could be shoveling stuff back onto the site that got onto one of the neighbors or, or whatever. But the other thing he'll do is all day long is he's just pulling uh, scrap metal and keeping himself busy. A lot of guys for, with other companies, this guy, their ground guy is just going to sit in his truck and only wait until they need something done, but that's not the way Sepio is. Sepio is gonna stay busy all day long and he's gonna help us out and do a fair amount of work every day.
What they're doing right here is the little excavator there, it's called a 308. What he's doing is he's just going through and picking out things that are scrap metal and things that are gonna make a load dirty. And then what Colton's doing as he's going through here is he is looking for refrigerators and stoves and washers and dryers and metal bathtubs and things like that. And he'll put them off to the side. That pipe right there he just pulled out is a piece of copper. We got a crazy amount of copper off of this job. This is Colton and he is using a mattress to clean off the top of this concrete so he can load a, a tighter load. It's kind of cool and then he's very methodical about how he does stuff. In his mind, he has everything organized and everything's in a certain place and he's got a certain position that he's working on with the C and D. There's a certain thing that he's got going on with the concrete. There's a certain thing going on with, uh, you'll see different piles, things, the gooey stuff and the mattresses and like the couches and stuff, that they, they don't want those at the C and D dump. So this right here, this is a very, very, very heavy load. It's uh, a very well packed concrete dumpster and he's taking that off and like I said, that'll cost between 150. It just depends. Some places we can get it, we can dump it for a hundred bucks. It depends on how close we are to that place. Other places, it's normally not much more than $200. So here we are, we've been on this job for a while. We're still using the um, C and D 65 yard dumpster. See the C and D dumpster, we can't put uh, the same amount of weight in it that we can put in those concrete dumpsters. The concrete dumpsters are smaller if you know, notice and that's because there's only a certain amount of weight that you can put on the road per axle with your concrete. So the concrete loads are gonna be smaller because they're crazy heavy. These bigger loads like this, C and D stuff is not nearly as heavy. So this is gonna end up probably being a partial load for him because we don't have enough uh, to fill it all the way up. Like I said, the gooey stuff is trash. So mattresses and, and things that are um, household kind of items and cleaners and stuff like that, they don't want that stuff at the the C and D dump. So that stuff all has to go to a different dump, which is out on Buckingham in our area. And it's, uh, that's more or less the landfill. Uh, this particular area, they have a, an incinerator 
and all that stuff gets burned up. So you got one 30-yard dumpster, it's got nothing but scrap metal in it. You've got the 65-yard um, semi that's running construction debris uh, out to the construction debris dump. If you notice in the background, the small dump truck, it also has scrap metal in it. We take the scrap metal back to the shop and then Bernard and the guys in the mornings, they will go through that stuff and they will process it. Processing it basically means cutting off the plastic, the caps and the solder and whatever else that makes it a, a foreign debris on like copper or, or on aluminum. Um, the difference between clean aluminum, clean copper, and clean brass and stuff is a significant price difference. Um, and what the difference is, is somebody's got to do the labor. What Colton's doing now is he's trying to get everything cleaned up so that all he has to do is take the concrete out. And he doesn't have to fight with it and get the C and D and all that other stuff out of it. So he's basically sweeping up his mess. Then he's gonna go back and all he'll have to deal with is concrete. In the pool right now is a whole bunch of dirt, and that dirt is what we're gonna use to smooth out this lot. There is a little plan going on all the time. There's a plan for the concrete, there's a plan for the dirt, there's a plan for the landscaping, and then Colton's gonna jump back on foundations and pulling out the grade beams. They're sunk way down into the earth because they didn't have a good solid surface to work on when they built the building. And then they raised this building up and it was built about four feet off of the grade and I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe there was some purpose behind it, but there was a built up sidewalk area there. You can't really see it, it's all covered up, but that all has to come out now. So he'll have the pool, have the rocks in the pool, he'll have the uh, cinder block wall that goes around the pool, and all of this stuff that's left is concrete. They're gonna take the rocks that are in the pool, there were rocks all the way around this pool, and we threw the rocks in the pool and backfilled the pool for these guys because they knew they were in for a long fight with their insurance companies to keep the uh, pool safe and to keep the mosquitoes down. So we did that for them. We used rocks as filler, knowing that we were just gonna dig them back out. And then Logan took those rocks, we took them over to his house, and he's gonna use them for landscaping. They're, they're pretty cool rocks. You know, if we ran and this at normal speed it would be painfully painful for you to watch so he's at double or triple speed on this um, video you can tell by the cars going by so right now he's doing a couple different things he's taking out concrete and then he's digging through all of that uh, we brought this fill in months ago um, he's digging through there and finding the big gigantic rock. See how much dirt we got there? We brought all that dirt in I forget how many loads it was it was like 20 loads of dirt we brought in just to fill in that pool. I mean, look at the size of that thing. It's really deep too. So Colton found it was easier just to get down inside of this one and pull it together inside so we wouldn't have to dig up so much of the, uh, the dirt around the pool. You know, he's always trying to be a little more effective and efficient. That is a Takahoochee. Uh, it's about a $100,000 piece of machinery and it is very, very, very reliable and effective. We have two other skid steers and we're fixing them nonstop. When we bought this, it was recommended by Colton and our mechanic to get this particular brand. Uh, what Colton's doing here is, again, he's cleaning up the mess and he's going to try to keep control of the mess so that he doesn't have so much contamination into things that he's working. So this is our rock hauler. This is our semi that we haul uh, concrete with. It was being used on another job, so he's got time today. So he's over here running and he's directly pulling the uh, pool apart and loading it directly into uh, this concrete dumpster. And again, he's trying to avoid getting dirt into the concrete as much as he possibly can. There are limitations 
to doing this kind of work and you have to put up with it in the construction industry so he's doing his best to get this out and to not mix it up too much with uh with the dirt so the water there um, that's the water table if you look over there at the canal well that water seeps over and gets into a hole i mean more or less port myers beach is just a big gigantic sandbar so if you dig down three or four feet you end up inside of the water table and, and it fills up things pretty quick. We're just cleaning up the mess, getting it all into one pile. And again, you know, you can stand around and do nothing or you can find something that needs to be done. And all these little things, ultimately they help out because when you get to the tail end of the project, you got to do this stuff anyway. So here we are, Colton is spreading out the dirt and moving it around, trying to make it so that it doesn't take so long with the skid steer to make it all smooth. So he's got the pool out and right now we're just getting ready for final grade. If you notice the wall there, we had to get the owner to come and take a look at the wall. The wall and the cap are all built together as one, the cap for the seawall. So if we took that wall out, we could very well destabilize the seawall and have the seawall fall in, which is not something that anybody wants us to do. All right, so this is Colton. Hi. Colton took this building down. So we're at the tail, the tail end of this. It had a really deep pool. A lot of this dirt was already here because the pool, we filled the pool in earlier on just to, to make it safe. And um, a lot of publicity on this one, Colton. It's a crazy amount of publicity. New tonight, a pile of rubble is all that remains at an iconic spot on Fort Myers Beach. Dolphin Inn drew tourists to southwest Florida from all over the country and the world. Hurricane Ian damaged it beyond repair. After nearly two years, it's gone. Yeah, and now many people are wondering what's next. The Night Beats Haley Zarconi joins us now live from Fort Myers Beach. Haley, do we know the plans? Well, what's next for this property is still undecided, but whoever does take over this plot of land is going to pay a pretty penny for it. And this is just one of many spots on Fort Myers Beach that's been demolished and then put up for sale since Hurricane Ian. Look at that, 925-22. The hurricane was 928-22. Walking through what's left from Hurricane Ian at this Fort Myers Beach vacay spot brings back memories from pre-storm times. Now almost two years after, this land is up for grabs. This was the Dolphin Inn Resort, an island staple that's being cleared off the property it sat on for decades. Built in 1966, the demolition company says the resort took on damage that made it unrepairable. So we walked through it beforehand and it looked like, you know, just a tsunami, like technically a hurricane obviously, came through it and it actually just wiped out the entire floor of the first and second floor. It was all undermined. You could literally walk under the building or you could walk into one of the rooms and actually just go right through the floor. So this video this from the demolition company's YouTube channel so shows just that. We took down the Dolphin Inn this weekend and we started, I would say, about a week and a half ago. We'll keep these doors, but if you look inside, everything's ruined. Clearing out a property like this isn't cheap. I'd say between 100 and 150 grand. Um, to tear it down completely. But the land it's on is listed for more than $4 million. And as you can see behind me, this is still very much an active site for demolition. While the building itself is gone, this is what's left of the resort sign here. And beyond me over this way, if you'll walk with me this way, you'll see that there is a pile of mattresses that's left over from what we can only assume is from some bedrooms at the resort. And just behind that is the resort's dock that's still pretty much in good condition, according to the demolition company from when I talked to them earlier today. On the night beat, Haley Zarconi, Wink News.
What do you think? Was this a hard one to tear down or an easy one to tear down? It wasn't that bad overall. The few things that made it a little bit tougher was is there was a lot of a lot of areas where the water eroded through, so there was a lot of hidden holes underneath the concrete and things like that. Um, and then obviously when the storm came through, it blew debris everywhere. So from one end to the other was completely covered with debris. But as far as the actual building, it was from the 60s, so it wasn't quite as sturdy as some of the newer things that we tear down. So overall, it wasn't that bad. So the machine handled it. A lot of debris everywhere, so you had more to do, but the machine was easily able to do it. Yeah, there was a lot to do, but as far as difficulty, we didn't really struggle with anything. Um, you know, we, we've been here less than two weeks, so I would say overall it's not bad for the size of the project and the amount of debris that we hauled away. So have you have been, been having a lot of people stop by here while you're working? We've had a few people stop by and, you know, a lot of people slow down, you know, on the road or maybe, you know, pull in the median or something like that. Um, other lot, than that, not you think too you many got people. your picture taken about 500 million times? Oh yeah, yeah. There's been a plenty lot of, people. of people taking pictures. They stop in the median, you know, hang their phone out the window and take pictures and things like that. So how long have you been tearing down? Uh, how long have you been operating an excavator? As far as operating the excavator, I started when I was really young. So how, uh, how young? Uh probably maybe 13 or so. 13. 13. So you young. get better at it over time, and yeah. you know, um, try to get get Dave here to buy us the best stuff. So. So, you, so you're almost to perfection. You're very close. I don't think anybody will ever get there. But yeah. Try to try to well, you be do as good. perfect as we can. You do good, and you think things through, which is thank. We thank you for that. Yes, sir. So, uh, is there anything you'd rather do than this? Not really. You like no, running no, that I machine? I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Yeah. I yeah. remember we had a conversation once. I talked about you know putting you in something else, and you're like, Dave, I just really love running the excavator yeah <laughs> so, yeah i like doing that you know and driving the trucks and, and stuff solving like the problems oh, and yeah, all that and yeah, you get a yeah. good you get like a two this is an abnormal one normally you're on them what four or five days maybe yes sir so you get to see it start as a mess and you get to clean it up and when you're done it's like ah. yes yes and you get to figure it out as you go you know you never really know exactly how you're going to take it down you just kind of have to you know figure it out as you go kind of wing it as you're going yes sir Every so, day I see him, he's smiling. Yeah, behind yeah. me. So let me ask you a question. What do you think about the strand view? You think that's going to be a bear? I don't think so. I mean, it's just going to be we did, slow, right? We did the one a while back on, on swamp cabbage, and that one was really tough. But other than that, I don't really think. I don't yeah. think that one will be that bad the way it's put together. Yeah, I don't think it's built put together very. I think the concrete, a lot of the concrete's failing. It, it's coming apart. Yes, sir. Um, so anyway, we're almost done with getting all the windows and that out of that. You're going to go work on this $37 million house. You're going to take off the roof. Yes, sir. Then we're going to come back here and get strand you. Yes, sir. So um, anyway, thanks. It's Remove Pro's Demolition. This Absolutely. is Colton. Yes, sir. El Jefe Supremo. <laughs> and uh, he's going to get back. He's almost done. So. There's Sepio, he's uh, getting different little pieces out. They're trying to get all the little pieces that are gonna make it difficult to smooth the lot out. And they get all them out of the way and it just makes it a lot easier to make everything smooth if you don't have big pieces of rock that you're dragging. And then the machine there, it jumps around. There's a setting on it and what they're doing is they got that very fancy rake that we put on there. It gets the dirt out and it sifts it out and it works out really good. You see how they're working together here doing that. What that does is it, you know, makes us take stuff to the dump uh, that they actually want, which is the concrete, and uh, take the least amount of dirt as possible. So look at that, isn't that amazing? So the only thing really left here is a little bit of asphalt. Mike Lara and Sepio will come back the next day and they'll peel all this up and get it out of there and then they'll finish smoothing the lot out. You know, the asphalt goes to a different place as well. A lot of times they're turning that back into and recycling it and sending it right back out as asphalt very, very quickly. A lot of times you can actually take your asphalt and your concrete to the same dump and they'll separate them out at the site. They recycle them in different ways. Uh, 
That's the drone running directly above that. It's got a mode on the drone where you can look directly down. So it's kind of cool to see that. It's very interesting. So that little machine has a stereo system in it and it has a heating system and a cooling system and it's very comfortable to operate. It's all joystick driven. I'm trained or I learned how to run a skid steer with foot pedals. This is our low boy. It's about a $100,000 trailer. It pulls apart. We move our own equipment so we don't have to wait for uh, these other guys getting us under their schedule. We like to do everything that we can on our own. So he's tightening that up. He's heading down to the southern part of Naples and he is going to grab the trusses off the top of a house and pull them off and then we'll do the rest of it. What he can't pull off with the uh, excavator, we'll do it uh, by hand. So there it is, the Dolphin in, it's gone. Kind of sad, but actually it really looks a lot better. And amazing amount of people followed this uh, demo. Um, it was amazing, every time I went by it, there were people standing on the sidewalk watching. You can see behind me that the Dolphin is done. Okay, we're finished with it. We have one little thing we gotta do over here. We had to locate the sewer, and there were so many pipes coming off the pool, we couldn't figure out which one was it. So we got the city to help us out, to help locate it, and then we, uh, we dug it out. If you notice here, uh, we smoothed the lot out and made it just as smooth as we possibly can. What's fascinating to me about this job is how much coverage we got from everywhere. Wink News was out here several times. There were uh, several different Facebook groups that were following it. People were taking pictures. I seen it all over the place. It was fascinating to me. And then I was talking to somebody this morning at breakfast and they were telling me that um, Wink News had this on a loop on Sunday. So while they were in between doing something, they had it on a loop. So it kept showing our logo and, our, and what they were doing here and our equipment and stuff. So that's kind of cool. You couldn't pay for better publicity than that. So let's go over here and take a look at what's left over here. So back here, what we did, um, and there's a reason that we do things this way. The owner knows it. The owner's in real estate. He's a smart guy. He knows. So we didn't take any of the dock out. We could have taken the dock out for him. It would have saved him some money uh, long term. But what happens is whatever's here, let's say that it's beyond what they allow you to put in today. Anything that's here is not going to be taken away from them. So we had a problem, too, when we were doing this, this job. The... Uh, the cap in this wall were formed as one, in the seawall cap. Okay, and the seawall, if you look at it closely, it's not in very good condition. So we ended up, we made, a, we made a decision, the owner made a decision, we just cleaned all this stuff up and we, uh, we left this in place to just make sure that the seawall doesn't fall in for him. So, so basically that's it, man. The dolphin, a lot of people love the dolphin. I have seen it in our YouTube channel. I've seen it over and over and over. I stayed there, I loved it. I stayed there, I loved it. I stayed there, I loved it. And pe the people who ran this place were, they were, they were liked and, and very much admired by a lot of people. So we heard a lot about that. So at any rate, it's basically, this is it, it's done. Uh, we're finishing up a $37 million one down in Naples. And then the, we're finishing up the 30 unit down the street. Uh, we had some hiccups on that. One of the machines went down and then we're off to do the strand view, which is the, the first six story structure that we will be doing. Um, I've done big stuff like that in the Air Force, but I haven't done it in, out here. So we'll be taking that down here shortly. It should be pretty fascinating to watch. So if you like this demo, we got plenty more on our channel to look at. You don't have to wait for the strand view. We're gonna uh, film the strand view as we're taking it down. Uh, we'll have probably one or two episodes, maybe three on that. It's gonna be a pretty very interesting demo. So hey, Remove It Pro's demolition. Uh, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video.
Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe and leave us a like. I will see you on the next video.